Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Uh, within the energy topic, we are going to start talking about specific heat. Uh, last when we left off, we were talking about insulation or incoming solar radiation, methods of energy transfer, now specific heat. Specific heat is how fast something heats up and cools down. The units we use for this are a little bit odd to look at. It's actually a joule per gram degree Celsius. So a little bit odd. We're not used to looking at units like this with multiple um, units down on the bottom there on the denominator, but here it is. The higher the number, the longer it takes to heat up and to cool down, much like a race. The lower the number you have, the faster you've done the race. And that's the same thing here. So the higher the number, the longer it takes to heat up or cool down. The lower the number, the faster it takes to heat up and cool down. Our reference table has a table of specific heats of common materials right on the cover. If we go to our reference table right here, and you'll see on the cover is our specific heats of common materials. Right here, right on the cover, it's nice and easy to get to. And notice the units, joules per gram times a degree Celsius, much like we, last, or we just saw on the previous slide. Getting back, we can look at the specific heats of common materials on our earth science reference table, comparing everything from liquid water all the way to lead. And if we also look on this, we should notice a little bit of a pattern. The higher the substances specific heat are gonna be located on the top, moving down towards substances with the lower specific heat. We can look and compare these. Which substance has the highest specific heat? Well, looking at our chart here, we can see lead all the way down at the bottom with 0.13 joules per gram degree Celsius, going all the way up to liquid water with 4.8 joules per gram degree Celsius. What that means is it takes 4.18 joules of energy to heat up one gram of liquid water, one degree Celsius. So we have H2O liquid. Which substance has the lowest specific heat? Well, remember I said the lowest is at the bottom. We go down. We see here lead has 0.13. And finally, which one will heat up and cool down the fastest? Well, let's go back. If we were walking, if we're racing, the lower the number, the faster we've done it. So if we look, here's our lower numbers number. So lead would heat up and cool down the fastest. On Earth, most of our crust is made up of basalt and granite, which we find right here. These are two common materials that make up our crust. So basalt and granite make up our crust. These rocks have low specific heat. If you look here, 0 0.84, 0 0.79 joules per gram degree Celsius compared to liquid water, which covers about 75% of our planet, um, these rocks have a relatively low specific heat. Therefore, they heat up and cool down faster than the rest of the planet. Okay, What this associates with is how fast different parts of the Earth heat up. Remember, here's our, here's our crust made up of basalt and granite. These have a low specific heat. Versus the water, H2O liquid, which has a high specific heat. We'll just do it. Specific heat. So that means these heat up quickly. And hence the high number right here. And if you notice, we have this group of arrows creating what's called a convection cell. So the specific heat of the Earth's surfaces makes or helps make up convection cells within our atmosphere. Okay, if we look, you see many people when you get to the beach, they're running, they're running on the hot sand. The reason is, is that sand heats up very quickly because it has a low specific heat. 
So it could be outside during the day, 95 degrees outside, and it could be around 11, 12 o'clock in the, in the, uh, during the day. And you notice that the land or the sand has heated up very quickly. It's got that because of a low specific heat. Then you go running across the sand into the water and notice the water is maybe only 65, 70 degrees. That's because water has a high specific heat, so it takes a very long time for it to heat up. This is why sand feels so hot in the daytime while the water still feels relatively cold. Okay, We can apply this to cities around the country or around the planet. Coastal cities, they are going to have milder temperatures. Coastal cities are near water, H2O liquid. So they have a high specific heat. So they heat up slowly. Since they're near the water, they heat up very slowly. Versus deserts, deserts have a low specific heat. So they heat up quickly. That's it. So we can see that daily temperature ranges can change quite a bit or depending on if you're near water or if you're just surrounded by land. Uh, coming up next is the greenhouse effect.